Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. New Egyptian Mummy The discovery of a new Egyptian mummy could just be rewriting history. In 2019, archaeologists discovered the mummified body of a nobleman from ancient Egypt to be much older than previously thought. The nobleman is called Kui, and they have dated his remains back to the days of the Old Kingdom, about 1,000 years earlier than researchers had reported. This makes Kui one of the oldest mummies ever uncovered. It changes history for one primary reason. It shows evidence that the Egyptians were using advanced embalming techniques over 1,000 years before previously assumed. This nobleman was mummified 4,000 years ago, and it was done with shocking sophistication. The process, the materials that were used, the quality of the resin, and the linen dressing, it was all ahead of their time. According to Professor Salima Ikram, the head of Egyptology at the American University in Cairo, historians must revise every single book about mummification and the history of Egypt's Old Kingdom. All the dates need to be changed. Until now, researchers thought mummification during the days of the Old Kingdom was a simple process, basic dehydration and frequently unsuccessful removal of the brain not to mention more detail given to the appearance of the mummy than the actual science behind the process. But that's not true. It must have been that poorer people closer to the bottom of the social ladder had bad mummifications, while the richest in society had the knowledge to do things the right way. Number 9. Vikings in the New World A shocking recent discovery has changed everything we understand about Vikings in the New World. Researchers in Canada have finally found a second Viking settlement in North America. It's close to the first one at Lansau Meadows, just a few miles away at a place called Point Rosé. It's a small peninsula that stretches off the southern tip of Newfoundland and into the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. Researchers here discovered a stone hearth that Vikings had once used for working iron. Those same Vikings built their first settlement on the northern tip of Newfoundland. But just what exactly was happening here 1,000 years ago? It's all become quite confusing with this newest discovery. We know the first settlement at Lansau Meadows was temporary. It was more of a way station that was abandoned by the Vikings after a couple of years. But this newest place at Point Rosé shows evidence of a longer habitation. Plus, it's on the other side of the island. It would have taken a significant amount of time and effort to journey from the first site to the second site. Sadly, there's not much remaining in the way of archaeological evidence, but if they prove the discovery legitimate and this was another Viking site, there could be even more such sites spread across the North Atlantic. Number 8. The Origin of Man the analysis of a fossil belonging to a species of hominin known as El Greco has flipped everything we know about the evolution of mankind on its head. The analysis of the fossils, which belong to a type of early human which arose in the Mediterranean part of Europe, suggests humans didn't emerge in Africa. They may have started in Europe, then moved into Africa. If true, every history book in the world will need to be rewritten, because until now, just about every scientist and historian in the world has agreed that human life started in Africa. The predominant theory has always been that a small group of hominids evolved in Africa, then dispersed through the rest of the world to become Denisovans and Neanderthals, and eventually humans. But looking at the tooth and lower jawbone of the El Greco fossils, archaeologists have thrown the Africa theory out the window. Archaeologists found these fossils in Bulgaria, and these bones belong to the oldest, pre-human, ape-like creature ever identified. And if it was living in Europe, that means it was there over 4 million years earlier than any similar human-like creature discovered in Africa. Number 7. Friendship Ornaments Friendship is not a modern invention. 6,000 years ago, hunter-gatherer communities in the northeast of Europe weren't just a bunch of primitive cave people. They were humans with emotions and friends. A recently discovered Stone Age artifact has proven beyond any doubt just how important friendship was to this group of people. Scientists believed for a long time they were nothing but bird-brained troglodytes. But throughout Finland and near the Lake Onega region in Russia, archaeologists have been digging up broken pendants. 
These people made broken pendants or ornaments from slate rings. Researchers simply thought they were lost and buried for thousands of years. But a recent study by scientists at the University of Helsinki has proved something different. People broke these ornaments on purpose and smashed them into fragments to be used as Stone Age friendship necklaces. I'm talking about matching necklaces that, when put together, form a heart-shaped pendant. You know, the BFF style of necklace. Picture this in your head, except 6,000 years ago. These Stone Age people broke the larger ornaments on purpose, then fashioned each half into a necklace to be worn by a pair of long-distance friends. Researchers know this because they found two matching fragments at two different locations, meaning a different person wore each piece. They found the same thing multiple times, proving it wasn't a fluke. It seems nomadic ancient people, even though they lived a vagabond nomadic lifestyle, still kept reminders of their friends in faraway places. Did you use a friendship necklace or a bracelet? Let me know in the comments below. Number 6. The Lost City of Atlantis The confirmed discovery of the lost city of Atlantis would flip the world upside down. People have been searching for Atlantis for so long that finding it today would be like finding Godzilla sleeping in the ocean somewhere. How close is Plato's story to real history? It seems researchers are getting closer to the Atlantis mystery. After years of research, and with the help of satellite technology, researcher Christos A. Jonis has revealed the most likely prehistoric setting for Atlantis, an actual place currently 400 feet underwater. It's called the Cyclades Plateau, and in the year 9600 BC, it was a super island off the coast of mainland Greece. What's fascinating about the plateau is that it corresponds to the time when Plato described Atlantis. To Plato, Atlantis went extinct roughly 11,000 years ago, a very long time ago. That was just around the end of the last ice age. The Greek islands that we know about today, like Mykonos and Santorini, were mountainous parts of the Cyclades Plateau. But after monumental flooding around 8,000 BC, the islands we see now are the only parts of the larger plateau still sticking out of the water. The point of this whole thing is that Atlantis was right there off the coast of Athens. All the small islands of the Aegean Sea were once part of a solid landmass that was likely called Atlantis. And when it flooded, it became broken up into tiny islands. If the water level ever drops 400 feet, the island of Atlantis will once more be visible as a whole. If this theory of Atlantis is true, how do you think Plato could have known about a flood that happened 8,000 years before he lived? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Romans in Canada A shipwreck in Nova Scotia, Canada has revealed some unique evidence that suggests the Romans were the first people to discover North America. This would rewrite history in a lot of ways. Not only would it rewrite the original rewrite of the Vikings discovering North America, but it would show the Romans were more sea-savvy than anyone had realized. The biggest piece of evidence for this comes from a Roman sword, a piece of ancient treasure fished out of the ocean while a man and his son were hunting scallops off the coast. But they never told anyone about the discovery, because in Nova Scotia, the government owns all the shipwrecks and any treasure discovered belonging to one. So they kept this sword a secret for decades. It wasn't until after the man died that he passed the sword down to his daughter. And then it was her husband who finally alerted some archaeological authorities. According to researcher J. Hutton Pulitzer, the Roman sword is authentic. A test showed it is made of the same ore as Roman swords. But no one has ever found the shipwreck it came out of. There are a lot of shipwrecks scattered around the coast here, and almost nobody is investigating them. But that doesn't change the fact that a man and his son found a sword from ancient Rome in the waters of Canada. Maybe a Roman brought it to Canadian shores, or someone took the sword from a Roman. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. The Mungo Man the Mungo Man was discovered by geologist Jim Bowler in New South Wales in 1974. The Mungo Man's bones proved to be the oldest remains of any indigenous Australian in the country. Archaeologists dated them at 40,000 years old, and they immediately changed the history of Australia. 
These bones are still the oldest Homo sapiens remains ever found on the continent of Australia. This was a shocking revelation in the 1970s because it proved definitively that the indigenous peoples, the native Australian groups, were the first to live on the land. To give you an idea of how important this timescale is, the indigenous people of Australia were present on the island for about four times longer than Native Americans in North America. The dating of the Mungo Man skeleton proved that when Native Americans were first migrating to North America, people had already been living in Australia for 30,000 years. This discovery changed the modern European ideas of what Australia is, reforming the nation's known history. Number 3. Very Short Farmers A shocking new discovery says that when human beings stopped hunting and gathering and started farming, it had extremely negative health side effects. A recent study combined genetics and skeletal remains to prove that 12,000 years ago in Europe, the earliest farmers were extremely short. Researchers from Penn State wanted to see what happened when humans stopped moving around, gave up hunting, and became sedentary farmers. They thought a good way to do this was to look at the height of ancient people around the same time period. So, about 40 international researchers got together and looked at the heights of people who lived before and after the Neolithic era, until the Iron Ages. The result of this in-depth study was a graph of heights from 38,000 to 2,400 years ago. We can now see the height of Europeans from the days of mammoth hunters to the time of farmers, and what we see is that the first farmers were approximately 1.5 inches shorter on average than previous humans. But as time continued, people once more got taller. They got taller in the Copper Age, a little more in the Bronze Age, and back up to pre-agricultural human height after the Iron Age. Something happened when we started farming that made us short. The issue right now is that scientists don't know what that was. Number 2. The Oldest Fossil Scientists have discovered what they say could be the oldest fossil on the planet. This ancient fossil is 3.75 billion years old, and it could rewrite everything we know about life on this planet. They made the discovery in Quebec, Canada. Associate Professor in Astrobiology at the University College London, Dominic Papineau, found the fossil while on an expedition in 2008. But it wasn't until 2017 that he published his findings. He discovered tiny fibers of bacteria left behind in ordinary rocks. That means the bacteria were alive and thriving at the time the fossil was made. This means they existed much earlier. The study says the bacteria could have been around 4.2 billion years ago, even though scientists agree that that would be impossible. Nobody believed life could have existed on the primordial Earth, not at the very beginning of our planet's formation. Scientists thought it took around a billion years for life to finally kick off in any meaningful way. But this bacteria proves otherwise. Now it looks like there were diverse microbial ecosystems at the very beginning of the planet's formation, or at least soon after. What this means for the rest of the universe is shocking. If there was life on primordial Earth, a place as inhospitable as Mars, there could be microbial life on every other planet in the solar system. Or at least there could have been billions of years ago. Number 1. The Roundels Archaeologists recently discovered structures even older than the Egyptian pyramids in Central Europe, and nobody is sure who put them there. These structures are called roundels, and they are found in Czech. The structures are circular ditches, primitive Neolithic fortifications around what was probably once a modest settlement. They were built around 4800 BC. But then they were abandoned about 200 years later in 4,600 BC. The huge mystery is that scientists can't exactly figure out why. What they know is that researchers have found other similar fortifications across Europe. This exact style, the central settlement surrounded by ditches and fortified walls, was used for about 300 years before completely vanishing. Experts believe roundels were a kind of blip in history. An idea that worked well for a while, but then was abandoned because society changed. We don't know what that change was, but it was big enough that it changed history. Newer, more complex settlements were made, 
and human beings started advancing. What's weird is that it happened so quickly. It almost seems like some unknown event caused this dramatic switch from primitive living to megalithic city building. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for another video on ancient history. Bye!